guys. Welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be talking about 6.3 monosaccharides, stereochemistry of monosaccharides, and Fisher projections. Now, I'm going to kill an ant here, guys. Sorry. Now, uh, let's talk about Fisher projections. Fisher projections are these things that look kind of like this, and we've already kind of seen them a little bit in this chapter. There we go. And what a Fisher projection is, and this is a very simple one. All of them are, I should, should say, relatively simple, really. There we go. That's a Fisher projection. Now, what does it mean? Let's just draw out exactly what it means. Wherever you see uh, two lines come together, remember from our uh, lessons on skeletal structure, so... These arrows here, I'm pointing. I'm pointing at carbon atoms. So there's a carbon atom right there. And one, two, three, four. Let's see, oops. There's my aldehyde here. OH, H, OH, H, OH. H, OH, and finally H. Now, this is a this right here. This is a Fisher projection. This is not a Fisher projection, but it's what the Fisher projection is trying to tell you. Okay, I think everyone will agree. If I just draw a quick Fisher projection, these are much easier to look at than the corresponding sugar in the center of my screen here the one I'm drawing right now I think everyone will agree now that you know what it means is much more elegant much more simplistic to look at so it actually says more because you can really see what it's trying to say this model here it's a little busy it's got a lot going on and it can, can get relatively messy relatively fast so this is a Fisher projection it's generally how we display molecules in chemistry uh, simply for clarity and ease. Let me get, get my light back on here. Okay. Now, let's talk about some important monosaccharides. This, especially this part of the chapter is just going to be introducing you to some really seriously interesting monosaccharides. First one we want to talk about, glucose. Everyone's heard of glucose. It's the most abundant monosaccharide found in our, in our environment. Um, it's also called dextrose and also known as blood sugar. Of course, if you're diabetic you have a hard time dealing with glucose in your body, okay? The glucose is also a sugar unit in sucrose. Now, sucrose is one that you all know and love. That's table sugar. Lactose, for those of you who are lactose intolerant, very familiar with it, it's a dairy sugar. Amylose, amylopectin, glycogen, and cellulose are all polysaccharides. We're going to talk a little bit more about them later on. But uh, amylose, amylopectin are commonly referred to as starch. Glycogen is uh, found in animal, fa animal, the liver of animals, including humans. Uh, also found in muscle. And cellulose is plant fiber. And they're all made of glucose. All right? We'll talk more about that later, okay? Galactose, another kind of sugar. Galactose is combined with glucose in the disaccharide lactose. So lactose is a glucose and a galactose bond it together. That's the the dimer or the disaccharide lactose. And maybe a little fun fact: Galacto galactose, the body can convert galactose into glucose with an enzyme. And that enzyme is called a polymerase. It can just convert one to the other. So if you're eating galactose, it will eventually become glucose in your body. Mannose. Mannose is found most notably in cranberries. And it is not easily absorbed by the body. And here's something that you may find interesting. Mannose has been, has been shown to be effective against urinary tract infections. So that's kind of interesting. That's why people drink a lot of cranberry juice if they indeed have a urinary tract infection or think they might be getting one. They'll drink a lot of cranberry juice. Fructose. 
Fructose is another common monosaccharide. You've all heard of it. Oops, I'm sorry. High fructose corn syrup. I'm, heard, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a common sweetener in almost everything these days. Fructose is the other sugar that's found in sucrose. Fructose and glucose make sucrose. So fructose is a major component of table sugar. And it is the sweetest of all the monosaccharides, which is why they use it for, for sweetness, for sweetening things. Because it's so sweet, they don't have to use as much. A little bit cheaper, obviously, right? Um, ribose. Ribose is a very important sugar that you're going to want to remember because of its uh, prevalence found in DNA and RNA. Okay? Note the prefix ribo. Ribonucleic acid. Ribose. This is ribose right here. DNA is deoxyribo. Well, ribo means ribose. And there's the deoxy. Notice carbon 2. Carbon 2. In ribose, there's an OH right there. In deoxyribose, the OH has been replaced by a hydrogen. So that's what deoxyribose is. So there's RNA, ribonucleic acid, and DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. And ribose is a sugar. That's pretty cool. You have to admit that's pretty cool. So our DNA has a bunch of sugar in it. Absolutely. Pretty cool, huh? All right. And I guess that's it for that chat, the part of the chapter. These, these sections are really, really short. The reason being, it, it's pretty complicated stuff. So I'm trying to make the chapters or the segments of the chapters as short as I can as to not overwhelm you. But it's going to overwhelm you because it's just a lot. But don't worry. We're going to break it down, make it as easy as we can for you. And you will get through carbohydrates. It's not that bad. And I think if you just allow it to intrigue you, it will fascinate you because it's very, very interesting. All right, guys. And with that, I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.